In lesson three, we're going to get started creating a new blank database. We'll talk about the access interface. I'll show you how to turn on overlapping windows, which I prefer over the tabbed document interface. And I'll show you what to do if you get that security warning there. Let's begin by starting up Microsoft Access. I'm using Windows 10, so I'm going to click on my Start button and then find Access. If you can't find it on your menu, just come down here in the search bar and type in Access. And there it is right there. If you're not familiar with basic Windows usage, you should go take my Windows Beginner 1 class. I'm not going to take the time to cover basic Windows stuff in this class. For example, certain things like minimizing and maximizing, closing a window, using the title bar to drag a window around. I'm not going to cover all that, so go take the Windows Beginner 1 class if you're new to using a computer. Now, if you are planning on using Access a lot while you're learning it, and I hope you are, come down here on the Windows taskbar, right-click on the Access logo, and go Pin to Taskbar. That way, even when Access is closed, you'll still be able to open it by clicking right there. Now, when you start Microsoft Access, you're going to see this screen. Unlike other programs in the Microsoft Office suite, like Word and Excel, Access doesn't automatically start you in a blank document. In Excel, you get a blank spreadsheet. In Word, you get a blank Word document. Access is different. You've got to create your own blank database shell to put all your stuff in. All of your tables and queries and forms and reports and later on your macros and your modules, all of that stuff goes in one Access database file. Right here, you'll see where it says new blank database. That's what we're going to use. Over to the right here, you see some templates. There's asset tracking, contact students, event management. If you click here, you'll see a ton more. Templates are basically databases that someone else has already built for you. If you're looking to get up and running fast and you need a contact database, go ahead, start up the contact template, play with it, see if you like it. That's actually how I learned initially when I was learning Access way back in like 1994. There was a template, just one, that came with Microsoft Access called the Northwind Traders Database. It was your typical company database with contacts and orders and customers and all that. And I tore that thing apart. Between that and a few different books, that's how I taught myself access. So feel free to play with these templates, experiment with them, have fun with them. You're not going to break anything. But we're here today to learn how to build a database from scratch. So we're going to skip the templates. I do have some other videos where I cover a few of these templates. Go to my website and click on the search bar and type in templates if you're interested in learning more about those. I don't cover them in my normal classes because well, we're here to learn how to build our own database. Now, I have a Microsoft 365 subscription, which as of right now, it's February 2021. This is roughly equivalent to Access 2019 or 2016. It's about exactly the same. With the subscription, you constantly get new updates and new features. So Microsoft's always tweaking little things here and there. The core of Microsoft Access really hasn't changed much since 2007, but there have been minor little adjustments and tweaks and some tiny little changes here and there, and so that stuff can be confusing for beginners. That's why I like to re-record Access Beginner 1, sometimes 2, every few years. But as you get into my more advanced lessons, you'll see Access really is the same thing. The reason why I mention that is, don't hate me if your screen looks a little different from mine, because sometimes Microsoft likes to make little changes. So let's go ahead and click on Blank Database. Now, Access wants us to give the database a file name and to pick the location where we want to save it. By default, it will be saved in your Windows User Documents folder. There's mine. You can change it if you want by browsing here. I'm going to leave mine where it is. The file name is database1.accdb. Now, ACCDB is the Windows file extension. Microsoft actually used to hide that, and I think it's important for you to have them on. So if you have Windows 10 now, the default is you will see that file extension again. If you don't see that there, and you want to know how to turn Windows file extensions on, go to my website and search for Windows file extensions, and you'll find a video that explains how to do it. I'll put a link, too, down in the description below the video. Now, mine says Database 1. That's because this is actually the first database that I'll be building on this brand new machine. I just got a brand new laptop just for you guys. No, I'm just kidding. It's for me for recording classes, but I haven't made any databases yet. So it says database one. We're going to change this though. We're going to change database one right here 
to something else. So delete that. Now in this course, we're going to be building a fictional database for a fictitious company called PC Resale. Basically, they take old computers and they refurbish them and they resell them. When I first did my very first access class, now we're going back to the 90s, I actually was in the PC business and you can actually make money reselling computers. Flash forward now to 2021 and you could buy a brand new state-of-the-art laptop for less than $500. So PC Resale is a fictitious company that hasn't been around since the 90s, but we're still going to build a database for it. So right here for the file name, type in PC Resale. And like I said, build the database with me. Don't try to do your own thing just yet. There will be time for that. Press Enter. So Access has now created a blank database file, and it's trying to get us to build table one, our first table. Now, I particularly don't care for this method of building a table. They start you off with an ID field, which we'll talk about in a second, and they want you to add more fields by just clicking here and typing in data. Not the way I like to build tables. I like to define the table first, the structure of the table, then we'll add data to it. Building a table is not like just typing in data into an Excel spreadsheet. So we're going to do it differently. They've switched things around like this to make it easy for new Access users, but I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So let's just close table one right here. It'll go away. And now we're just left sitting at our blank database shell. Real quick tour of the interface. Across the top here is your title bar where you can see the path and file name of your database. If you have a Microsoft account, you'll see the account that you're logged on here. You should have done this when you installed Office. If not, don't worry too much about it. And no, that's not a real email address. That's my username on Microsoft's website. Don't email me there because I won't get it. If you have to email me, go to the contact page on my website. You'll find my email address there. Got your minimize, maximize, close buttons over here. Over on the left-hand side, this is the quick launch toolbar. It's where you can put things like save and undo and other things. I'll show you how to add things. Like I like to add form design and a few other things to the quick launch toolbar. We'll talk about that in a future lesson. Now, this thing here is called the ribbon. All right, the ribbon is their big menuing system. Back in the old days, before 2007, we just had the simple file, edit, view menu, and that was what I was used to. Then Microsoft comes around and introduces this ribbon in 2007 and throws everybody for a loop. But I'll be honest, after getting used to it and working with it for the past, what, 13 years now, I really do like it. It is a, it is a vast improvement over older versions of the menuing system. The ribbon is dynamic and will change based on what you're doing. If you click on a picture, you'll see options for pictures, for example. If you're editing a query, the ribbon changes and shows you query design stuff. So it's really cool. Now over to the left here, this is a thing called the navigation pane. This is where all of your objects are going to show up. All of your, your tables, your queries, your forms, your reports. Here's another database that I built previously. This is my tech help free template. You can actually download a copy of this on my website if you want to. It's a free template. I'll put a link to it down in the description below the video. But here you can see all my tables, my queries, my forms, couple reports, right? There's a main menu. You can open that up, go to the customer list. These are all forms that we work with on our screen, right? Open a customer, open up his orders, print an invoice report. Okay, all kinds of stuff you can do all from inside your database. And all of these objects are stored here in your navigation pane. Now, if you need more space on the screen and you're not designing your database, you're just working with it, you can actually minimize the navigation pane and the ribbon to save some space. This is handy if you got a small monitor or like me when I'm recording videos, I'm only recording a small window on my screen. So I want to use more screen space. So you can resize the navigation pane right here by just grabbing that border and dragging it. See that? Or you can close it, minimize it basically, All right? Open it back up again with that chevron. You can also minimize the ribbon by just simply clicking on any one of these tab headers up here, like double click on the create and it minimizes. So now you've got plenty more space down here. This is handy when you're working with the database and you want to fit a bunch of forms on the screen but you're not doing any design work, so you don't need to have to have these. You can click on these to bring up the menus, and then when you click on something else, it goes away, or you can double-click again to leave it open. I'm going to leave it open for class, just so everything is nice and within our reach right here. And the forms and reports we're building in class are going to be nice and small. But I've seen some pretty big databases with some large forms, so if you need more space, that's how you can get it. Now, depending on the size of your access window, 
your ribbon might look different. For example, if I come over here and if I resize access, notice how the ribbon kind of scrunches up. Okay, and you might have to click on these buttons to open those up. So if my menus look a little bit different from yours, don't panic. Okay. And as with everything in Microsoft Office, there's five, six, ten different ways to do everything. So in addition to double clicking on the ribbon tabs, for example, you can right click and go to collapse the ribbon and that will collapse the ribbon. Okay. I like to find one way that works for me and that's double clicking. And then I just stick with that. But yeah, people always say, oh, you can do this too. Yeah, of course you can. There's a million different ways to do everything in Microsoft Office. Down here on the bottom, you got the status bar. Usually it sits there and says ready, but you might also see messages there. If access is in the middle of processing a large query, for example, it's crunching numbers, you might see calculating. Depending on what you're doing, if you're designing something, you might see design view, F6 to switch panes, that kind of stuff. You can actually program in prompts for your user. So if you're building a database for other people to work with and they don't know what a particular field is, for the first name field, for example, you could put a caption in there that says, this is the customer's first name. Obviously, that's a simple one. But if you have something like customer sense, they might not know what that means. You can explain it to them down in the status bar. And of course, Access will also show you error messages. I just did a video this morning for my tech help series. The error message is the record set is not updatable. And lots of people ask me, what does that mean? So I explained it in a video this morning. And of course, down here in the bottom right corner, you'll see different indicators for like the nums lock key and the caps lock key and that kind of stuff. Now, before we actually get into building our first database, there are some interface changes that I want to make. And this is totally my preference, the way that I like to build access databases. You don't have to make these changes if you don't want to, but if you're going to be learning from me, I strongly recommend that you do. Now, the biggest change that I want to make is that by default, access puts you in what's called tabbed interface, where every table, every query, every form, every report shows up in different tabs like this. And each tab takes up the full screen. I don't like this. I think it's difficult to work with databases like this. You got this report, you got this form, you got this table. It's just, it's hard to work with it like this. I don't like this at all. I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it operates. I like my databases to look like this. This is called overlapping forms. When you open multiple objects, they're windows inside of the access window. All right, here's a form. That's its own window. Here's an order form. That's its own window. If I want to open up a table directly, it's got its own window. They're not big tabs taking up the whole screen. You can have stuff side by side if you want to. I prefer this. This is the original layout that Microsoft Access came with, and I want to return access to this. I don't like the tabs. Now, I used to wait till beginner level two to show people how to do this. I'd go through beginner level one using the tabs. And over the last couple of years, I've said to myself, why do I do that? Let's just get it over with right up front. Let me show you how to turn on the overlapping windows. So we're going to click on File and then come down to Options. That brings up the Access Options window. Go to Current Database. Click on Overlapping Windows. Turn off the Tab Documents. I hate that. And then click OK. Access says you've got to close it and reopen the database for the specified option to take effect. Go ahead and hit OK. Shut down Access. Come on down here to the taskbar. Click on the Access logo. Access starts back up again. Notice right here, there's our PC resale database that we created. Click on that. And now it opens back up. Now, we haven't added any objects yet, so you won't see any changes. But when we create our first table, you'll see a difference. Now let's talk about this security warning. It says some active content has been disabled. Click for more details. Well, you can click this yellow bar right here for more details if you want to, but I'm going to tell you what you need to know right now. That's what you're here for. Basically, it's possible, although unlikely, but it's possible that a Microsoft Access database could contain a virus or some other malicious code. If you get a database from someone else, don't open it in a trusted folder. And I'm going to teach you what trusted folders are very soon. And don't click on this button here that says enable content if you're not 100% absolutely sure that you trust the database. 
Now we're building this from scratch as a blank database. So you can trust this database. There's nothing in it. So go ahead and click on enable content. Now from now on, this database file is marked safe. I'm going to show you a little later on how to set up your own safe folder called a trusted folder. We'll get to that. But if someone sends you an access database file or an Excel spreadsheet or any of that stuff and that window comes up, that little bar comes up and said, this is not trusted, don't enable it if you're not sure. Okay? Because they could do things like delete files off your hard drive and all kinds of crazy things. Now, if you're curious about some of the other customizations that I like to make to my blank databases, I do cover them in my blank database template design video. It's part of my tech help series. I'll put a link to it in the description down below if you want to jump ahead and watch some of that stuff. It's essentially how I build this guy. It's a little more advanced, but if you want to get a, a jump start, go ahead and watch that. I will cover all of this in the series that you're watching right now, my regular access series of courses. But this template was like a quickie for people who want to get up and running and, and build stuff fast. And I use the tech help free template in all the tech help videos that I do so I don't have to keep starting from scratch. But don't worry. We're going to start slow, and we're going to get to all of that eventually, so just relax. In the next lesson, we're going to start by building our first table, the customer table.